everybody. This is the Three Minute Bible Study, and today we're looking at the religious makeup of the world of the New Testament. A mouthful. I hope I got it right. Anyway, um, if you were with us last time, you know that Greek language and culture permeates the region in which the New Testament would arise, Palestine or Israel or Judea. Uh, it, it permeates that region. Now, that being said, the, the dominant political force or political power was Rome. Now, Rome was notorious for absorbing other religions and religious practices into its own culture. The greatest example of this is the Greek pantheon. Rome would simply make it the Roman pantheon. They would keep the Greek gods, but they would change their names. They would keep the character and the stories, but Zeus would become Jupiter. Uh, in addition to that, they were generally pretty tolerant religiously, um, just so long as you showed fidelity to the empire. Now, with that being said, by the time of the New Testament, the, the worship of the Roman Greek pantheon, the worship of that, those beings as God had kind of faded. Uh, these beings were more seen like superheroes. Uh, there were celebrations and festivals, to be sure, but they were more seen as a way to unify and to bring some sort of cohesion to the empire. Not to say there weren't pockets where these gods were still worshipped sincerely, but generally uh, they were seen as the mythical fairy tales that they are. Now, with that being said, there was the rise of what's called mystery religions in the midst of this. And this is a world that's full of sickness, full of suffering, full of difficult questions. And there were a lot of people who wanted a more personal faith, and they wanted a faith that provided some sort of solace and comfort in difficult times. They wanted something that was spiritual and deep. And the mystery religions offered this. They were usually centered around some god, sometimes an obscure god, sometimes a more prominent god. And they professed to have these secrets that made life worth living and gave answers to tough questions. And in this, you saw secret religious rites. Maybe they had a secret handshake or something like that. You had uh, ritual washings, fellowship meals, that kind of thing. Now, a lot of critical scholars will say that will lump Christianity in or early Christianity in with some of these mystery religions, insisting that it was just one of these religions that survived. The reality is that that is not the case. Christianity was a faith from its infancy that was intended to be declared. It was in, you know, Jesus left his disciples, his final command, go and preach the gospel to all nations, right? So it was not a secretive religion, not like these mystery religions that were kind of, you know, um, shrouded in secrecy and, and you didn't know really what was going on unless you were on the inside. Now, there was a uh, an offshoot of this, which we'll get into later, called Gnosticism that proclaimed to be Christian. Uh, but the reality is true Christianity never had much to do with mystery religious cults. Now, finally, there is what's called emperor worship. Now, Julius Caesar declared himself to be emperor. Of course, before that could actually happen, he was murdered. Uh, Augustus became the first emperor of Rome. And while the Roman emperors generally were thought to take their place among the gods after their death, it was very unusual for them to be worshipped in their lifetime, but that would eventually become a deal. And the way you worship the emperor was essentially a way in which you showed fidelity to the empire. You would offer a pinch of incense in front of a bust of the emperor or a statue of the emperor. And in doing so, you said, Caesar is Lord. Now this caused problems with the Christians because they would never say Caesar is Lord because Jesus is.